Good evening and welcome back, my ghouls and ghoulettes. Tonight we have a special one for you. It's a title called Sirens in the Woods. It deals with the infamous cryptid Siren Head. Written by Ghost Inc. Horror. Please enjoy. Bang! Went the sound of gunfire. Each shot missing the center of the paper target. The person shooting was alone and looked frustrated at the process he's made. He lowered his hunting rifle and a person, presumably his friend, gave him a pat on the back. You got a lot of work ahead of you, Jerry, the man said in a calm voice. But you're getting better. None have missed the target. Yeah, but none hit the center either, Jerry pointed out as he took off his earmuffs. It's better than missing, he said before walking away. But if you like the rifle, go ahead and get it. Besides, you'll need something for the hunting trip. The man then laughed a little before walking out the room. Jerry looked at his rifle once more, only to sigh afterwards. He walked out the room and went up to the cashier. While doing so, another man walked in. He had blonde, shaggy hair a shallow beard and skinny body. Austin, Jerry said to him. You picked out your gun? He asked as he walked up to the counter. He then picked it up and examined it thoroughly. Marlin Model 336. I never saw you as a lever action kind of guy. But hey, it's whatever works. Is that bad? Jerry asked worriedly. No, no. It's just different, is all, Austin reassured. Mark is waiting for you, so I'll be out in the truck. He then walked out the building, leaving Jerry alone with the cashier. Thinking to himself, Jerry wasn't exactly sure if he was ready for hunting, but he also didn't want to disappoint his brother. Buying the rifle, Jerry walked out the building and climbed in the back of the pickup truck. They began driving shortly after he got in. Austin then reading the map, making Jerry confused. Are we not going to your usual spot? Jerry asked Mark. No, nah, today I wanted to go somewhere new. Our usual spot was taken by Dave's little camp trip with his kids, Mark responded. Oh, damn. So how far away is this one? Jerry asked. About an hour longer than the usual spot takes to get to, Austin answered. Jerry then nodded and sat back comfortably in his seat. He then opened a book he left back up there because he knew he wouldn't really be talking like they would be. To him, all this was new. Mark, his older brother, always went hunting with Dad when he was younger, while Jerry wanted to stay home. This was the only occasion he would go because it was Mark's birthday. He felt a little nervous, hoping he wouldn't actually have to kill anything. Along the ride, he could hear Mark and Austin chatter about what they could hunt and guns he didn't even know about because of their names. It wasn't a shotgun or a rifle. It was more specific names like Winchester. Jerry kept quiet knowing nothing about what they were talking about. Though it wasn't long before Austin looked over and called his name. Yo, Jerry, what's your favorite gun? Everyone has one they like, Austin said who had a curious look. I... I don't really know, Jerry said awkwardly. You should have expected that since he's never used a gun, really, Mark said to Austin. Yeah, you're right, Austin said before going back to his original position. After some time, they found themselves going up a long dirt path. Jerry looked out the window, thinking to himself that it was almost time to go hunting. They finally stopped somewhere. Mark and Austin got out of the truck and walked around the back, Jerry soon following them as he got out. Mark gave everyone their camo jackets, which had some bright orange to make sure hunters didn't mistake them. Each had a rifle and were ready to go. All right, Austin. I know you want to go alone, but we got to teach Jerry here, Mark said. Fine. Let's make this quick. Austin said, who looked disappointed. Is hunting ever quick? Mark chuckled as he walked off. 
Austin said something under his breath, but none of them heard what he said and continued to move on. Walking through the woods, it felt eerie to Jerry. He didn't feel particularly safe, but didn't feel scared. It was quiet. Barely any birds were heard, but you could only hear the footsteps of the group itself. Then suddenly, they all stopped as they heard a weird noise. It wasn't loud, so it was far. The hell was that? Some kind of siren? Austin asked the both of them. A siren? Out here? Mark said with confusion. I heard it too, Jerry said. Maybe you thought you heard a siren because why on earth would there be a siren in the middle of the damned woods? Mark asked them with even more confusion. You sure you guys aren't going crazy? Let's be quiet and listen again. And if there's nothing, then maybe we just heard something else, Austin suggested. Jerry and Mark nodded as they stayed quiet. As they stayed quiet, however, they did hear something else. They turned their heads in its direction and saw a deer walking alone. Get down, Mark ordered while whispering. They all crouched down. Mark helped Jerry focus his rifle towards the deer. Shaking, Jerry was having a hard time aiming at the deer. It's all right. Just aim for the head, and it's done, Mark said with a smile. Jerry couldn't find the confidence. His hands kept shaking, and he lowered his rifle. Mark looked confused. What are you doing? he asked. I... I can't shoot it, Jerry said weakly. You gotta be kidding me, Austin said frustrated. He then aimed his gun at the deer. Before he could shoot, though, Jerry pushed the gun to the side. Austin shot as he did this, missing his shot and causing the deer to run away. Austin knocked him to the ground with force. I almost shot you, idiot. He yelled out in anger. Mark, I told you you shouldn't have brought him with us because he would do something stupid like this. Austin then began running away to go find the deer. Austin, wait! Mark yelled, though Austin was already gone. Mark looked over to Jerry and helped him up even wiped the leaves and sticks that got stuck to his coat. I'm sorry, Jerry apologized. Don't worry about it. It's just how he is, he said calmly. No, I'm saying it to you. Wait, why? I didn't pull the trigger like you wanted me to. Hey, don't worry about it. I knew you wouldn't pull it. Then why did you bring me if you knew I couldn't kill anything? Because I wanted to spend time with my brother. I know I wasn't the best when I was younger, but I wanted to be with you. Wanting to hang out while doing something I really don't like? Jerry gave an awkward smile. Like I said, not the best here, Jerry said. They both had a chuckle. Anyway, Mark began... We should head back to the truck and go set up some tents. What about Austin? Jerry asked, concerned. He'll be fine. He's got a walkie-talkie, so if he needs to find out where we are, he'll give us a call. Oh, all right then, Jerry said. They both walked back to the truck, but as they did, Jerry thought he heard the sirens again, but ignored it. Eventually... They got to the truck, and Mark quickly pulled out some boxes. These have the tents. You go ahead and make yours. Hopefully you remember how to make one, Mark smiled. Boy Scouts didn't teach me for nothing, Jerry said. They both began making their tents, but it felt like a couple of hours as they did it. Mark was even struggling a bit. Checking his watch, Mark realized they've been out there for a few hours. Not only that but there hasn't been anything heard from Austin. Being slightly concerned, Mark called for him on the walkie-talkie. Austin, do you come in? He asked as he waited for a response. When there was no answer, he asked, Austin, are you there? Both Jerry and Mark waited to see if there would be an answer. Nothing but silence came from the walkie-talkie. Austin, Mark yelled. 
Then out of nowhere, Mark, will you shut up for two seconds? I was trying to shoot a deer and now you scared it off. Austin said in an angered tone. Well, I was worried about you and you weren't saying anything, Mark explained. Well, I'm on my way back. I can tell the sun is setting now, Austin said. Something felt off, though, at least to Mark and Jerry. There was the sound of sirens in the background. It went. Beep, beep, beep. Like an emergency on the phone. Austin, what's that noise? Jerry asked. Oh, I hear these sirens going on and off lately around here and can't find out where it is. It's gotten louder lately and it's kind of freaking me out. Then in the background, footsteps could be heard on the other end of the walkie-talkie. Austin, something is walking near you. We can hear it, Mark said. What are you talking about? It's only me walking around here. I don't see anything, but... He went quiet. But what? Jerry asked. Everything went silent till a loud siren noise went through the walkie-talkie, killing their ears. Jesus Christ! Jerry said while covering his ears. Mark quickly turned over the walkie-talkie and looked at Jerry. What the hell was that? Mark said. I don't know, but that that's not right. Jerry said with fear in his tone. We have to go find him, Mark said. Are you crazy? Have you not watched a horror movie? Jerry asked him. This isn't a horror movie, and I'm not leaving my friend behind, Mark yelled. So either you're staying here or you're coming with me. Jerry knew if he left his brother to go behind himself, he would feel nothing but guilt. Fine, I'll go. Jerry said reluctantly. Good. Now grab your gun and your flashlight and let's go, Mark ordered. Without any hesitation, Jerry grabbed his rifle and flashlight. Soon, they both ran into the woods, though none of them knew where Austin could be. Listen for the sirens, Jerry said. I was about to say the same thing, Mark responded. As they ran in the woods, the sun felt as if it was quickly disappearing. It wasn't long before it was nothing but darkness and the full moon shined amongst the leaves of the trees. Tired of running, Mark decided upon a decision. We need to split up. Take this walkie-talkie. Don't get lost and let me know if you hear any sirens, Mark explained. Splitting up is a terrible idea, Jerry pointed out. It's the only way to find Austin, Mark said. So please, trust me. Trust was something Mark always wanted from Jerry. Jerry then sighed. Just don't get yourself killed, please. Jerry pleaded. I won't, I promise. He said before running into the opposite direction. Jerry then continued to run and listen for the sirens they have all been hearing. Austin! Jerry yelled. There of course wasn't any answer to be heard. Then he heard it. The sirens were starting to echo around the woods. I hear the sirens, Mark said on the walkie-talkie. Jerry felt confused because he also heard them. Yeah, same here, Jerry said. We didn't go that far from each other. Who is closer, though, is the real question, Mark pointed out. Jerry listened and the sounds of the sirens began to fade away. Mark... It's getting farther away from me, Jerry said. It's louder over here. Try to make your way over here if you can, Mark said. On my way, Jerry said. As he ran, he could hear the sirens getting louder and louder, but soon he heard the scream of what sounded like Mark. He saw a flashlight on the ground and ran toward. The sirens getting really loud at this point. He ran up to the flashlight and then looked up only to a horrifying sight. Mark was in the hand of a creature, as tall as a street light, the head of two sirens and skin with a texture of rusted metal. Jerry, help me! Mark pleaded for help. 
The mouths were in the sirens themselves, and were wide open to chomp onto Mark's head. Jerry pulled out his gun, but his hands were shaking in fear. He couldn't move. He couldn't pull the trigger. All he could do was watch as his brother was about to be chewed on by a creature that no one could imagine. Mark screamed for his life as it had his head in between its jaws, and without any hesitation, chomped down and ripped his head off his body. Some of the spinal cord was pulled out and visibly sticking out of its mouth as it chewed. Tears ran down Jerry's cheeks as he watched the horror before him. He then found himself able to pull the trigger. When he did, it hit the creature square in the chest. The creature then dropped Mark's headless body on the ground and walked slowly towards Jerry. I'm sorry, Mark, he said. The monster lifted its arm up high and swung towards Jerry. The creature then hit him hard enough to split him in half. The monster then stood as it looked at what it had caused. It then walked off into the woods, continuing to make the siren noises it was before and continually making them as it searches for its next victim.